Today, Paul's cooking Philly cheesesteak. Because you asked for it. Nice. Hey guys, it's Ken and Paul again from KBD Productions TV. Welcome back to another Ken and Paul Cook and Review. How's it going, Paul? Good. Uh, what are we cooking today, buddy? We're doing Philly cheesesteak. Nice. We have had some comments about that, haven't we? I think we have. And, and what uh, did you get? What's, got, it, what's uh, it going to look like? It's going to look delicious is what it's going to look like. All right. And we're going to eat it and enjoy it, and then we're going to give it 50 thumbs up. 50? Nice. <laughs> so, what we got here, I've, we're going to make it really fast, because I've, I've got some... Um, this is a top sirloin that's already been cooked and sliced. Okay, how was it cooked? Like in the oven? Was, yeah, we did in the oven. The roast was, they were pretty big. This is for the restaurant. Uh, it's it's done in, um, it's coated in garlic, thyme, salt, roasted to be medium rare, and then uh, we portion it up. But okay. I brought that home because we didn't want to go through the whole thing cooking and slicing it. Okay. Up. What else you got um, here? What kind so of we, bread? This is that ciabatta buns, and it's got uh, a little bit of garlic butter in there right now. We've got oh. cheddar cheese. Mm. Traditional, it can, you, you see many variations provolone, mozzarella, cheddar mixed cheeses. We're just going to do cheddar because I had cheddar. I cheddar. Right. I had cheddar in the fridge. We're going to use it up. Nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to start since the beef's already cooked, we're going to saute onion and pepper first. Yeah, I'm just going to give that a quick uh, quick little sharpen so I don't take a finger off there. Okay, do it do it slow mo so people can see what you're doing. Now, do it slow mo so people can see what you're doing. Oh. So you just I'm slice you going all the way down. You don't really need need to use the whole knife because you, you're, usually... you pretty much want it from there. You're pretty much getting in, in that space there to there. If you bring it right down, you're going to catch the whole thing. Um, if you have no experience with a sharpener, put it on a cloth and then do this. Oh, nice. This is, uh, this is the no slice yourself way or go away with no one around you. But I'm, I'm lazy and I've been doing this a long time. And, I... and how did you start? You're showing me in the kitchen how you kind of get yourself I always, warmed up. I always, I always start going like this and then I, then I go into turbo speed. And I'm just like, Ugh! just because it's all about speed and time. And, and they always, always sure, clean yeah, your knife. Yeah, because you're going to have, if it was a white cloth, you'd see the uh, the grains of metal on oh. there. Oh, she's sharp. You want to glide through, just glide through. It makes it uh, so much easier to work with. Yes. And the other trick would be if I wanted, if my cutting board's bouncing, let's just take a cloth. It's, it keeps it from sliding on the counter, too. Just do one of these. Now okay. you sit on, you see it's not going to move now. Nice. So it's a lot more stable. Ooh, that's sharp. Why don't you peel the onion and we'll, we'll film you crying. Yes, that would be fun. Probably wouldn't be as bad out here because the wind's blowing a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we're not in a, in a closed space here, so it wouldn't be that bad. It's all about like large chunks in this sandwich. You're bringing the nut, you're gonna hit your uh, camera. You're a bit close there. I was like, whoop. Uh, yeah, usually you usually see it in slices, larger pieces. I've got garlic butter in the pan. We're gonna fire this up. Okay. I've already got the barbecue. Uh, oh, there she goes. We've already got this heating up because we're gonna we're gonna saute the onion, the peppers together. Then we're gonna throw the meat in, and then once that's ready to go, we're gonna put it in the bread, cheese on top. And we're gonna throw it in the oven in the oven in the barbecue but, which we're using and um, at the uh, restaurant it's called a salamander or broiler you can, or yeah it's a salamander okay. usually if you're just melting the cheese it makes it a lot faster yeah, okay so yeah but let's drink some beer but when we put it in the in there we're actually trying to heat up the meat as well yes yeah okay. they want it all hot right okay just before i got here i asked suri what kind of beers are best to drink with uh, a, ch a Philly cheesesteak. Yes. What were you gonna say? Well, I was gonna say Siri knows everything. And like, she knows I would it. never think of asking her that. I asked her that, and, and so she, she came up with a bunch of stuff. And of course, it was all like local beers from Philadelphia. Yes. And we, I couldn't find anything at the liquor store. So the guy at the liquor store, made a he, suggestion. yeah, he made three suggestions. I only grabbed two. So um, yeah, this one's called Steamworks, and this one's called Sawdust City. Ooh. This one I think is in mm. Oshawa, Ontario. So, and those is Vancouver. Oh, this one's Gravenhurst. Gravenhurst, yeah. right. Gravenhurst and uh, Vic, uh, BC. So let's crack it open. Uh, another thing too, because they 
uh, are all local beers from out that way. Everybody really likes the hoppy IPAs. So I did say India Pale or, or Pale yes. Ales, and most of the Pale Ales Our hoppy are hoppy. Our ale yeah. right there on the can. So I'm not sure if I'm going to like this or not. I hope I do. I'm going to love it. I'll tell you that right now. This one has less head on it. Less foamy. Yeah, it's a similar golden color, but it's not cloudy. Like yeah. The, like the Session uh, Ale there. Oh, nice pouring. Oh. oh. Well, there you go, guys. So we have a cloudy and a non-cloudy. Okay. Doesn't look like a typical hoppy just, beer. Just while that's, I'm just going to throw this in. Oh. That's so can, uh... You're not going to put it all in? I guess I could. I guess I got to do some for the oh, right. kids after anyways. Okay. Because we're... Not just yeah, feeding so me. Just, yeah. Cheers. Oh. oh. <laughs> that's, um... Right off the top, what does that smell like? Grapefruit. <laughs> yeah. Grapefruit juice. <laughs> Oh, very citrusy. Yeah, it's it's very citrusy. You can taste the hops. I would have thought it, it would taste been. like lemon. I I taste like grapefruit in like I no, that's I it. Smell Grape total and taste grapefruit. grapefruit with hops. Wow, I'm drinking grapefruit beer. Hmm. All right. Cheers on this one. Got. Which one was this one again now? Had, Which uh, one did you pour? This one. This was the Steamworks. Okay. This is uh, Steamworks. Steam power. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, this is a Kolsch. So we got another ale. Because we've done a Kolsch before. Right. We did, but uh, it wasn't this one, was it? No. I don't think so. hope not. Again, going from one beer to another is sometimes not the best idea, but... This one is less hop, like less uh, strong. Well, the Kolsch was in, yeah, the Kolsch they did, um, remember correctly, it's in like a style of a lager, so it's not, it's not as, I, as strong I, as that. The, um, this one, the Sawdust City is good. I really like the flavor of it, but I would probably buy this one again over this one. So in my, in my little world, Steamworks, Kolsch is my beer. And you like that one better or? Um I wouldn't say necessarily better. I do it I do like this as well. If you like is grapefruit. It, am I getting both? No. Oh, I thought you I thought you were sliding no, it over to my no, side no, so no, I get to drink. No, no. Oh, <laughs> Don't touch my beer, man. I'm gonna fight. So we're just uh all we've done is we've got garlic butter and we're just sauteing that. To yeah. to get them very uh soft or between soft it's and raw. Like you want it soft, you but go some for people, it. if you want it crunchy, then. But I, what I'm, what? Because as you what cook I'm onion, like is... you get that very. Uh, the more it's cooked, usually it's 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 pretty sautéed. Right. When you get them. It's. They... So when, when you buy one, when you're in Philadelphia, it's it's very yeah, sautéed. They will sauté it up ahead of time. It's a restaurant, oh, I, yeah. so they have it all sitting aside. So it's already hot, and they'll have a big griddle, and they'll put the beef on, usually which is raw. Yeah. And slice very thin, and so they'll they'll put it on on the griddle with a little bit of oil. Some put garlic, some don't. And then they're going to take their mix, which is already done, just to heat up, throw it in, and then um, different uh, different breads, baguette. There's like, I guess depending it's, on what they're using. Yeah. And then everybody has their own recipe. Of cheese. Has, like I've seen, like I was looking online, some I put mushrooms in it. Some huh. say traditional, they put marinara with theirs. So there's a whole bunch of variations on that. Okay. Because we're going to put a variation here, because we're going to I'm going to put some of that in mine. Some of what point? I missed what you pointed at. Oh, that's a habanero mayo. Habanero because we like mayo. it hot. <laughs> We're gonna we'll try it without, and then we'll put some on. Yeah, or I could do half. Sure. So we get on half of it. Then, sure. Yeah. Well, because you're going, you're or, actually going to mix it. Like I mean, or like you're gonna, we're gonna eat. It. I could just put on half the sample, or do you want to dip it? Are you going to like put it on like mustard kind of thing? You know I'm going to let you dip it then. Okay, we'll dip. So yes. the only thing you did with that right now is just garlic and butter. Yes. Okay. No, no, no seasonings whatsoever. No, traditionally it's just salt and pepper. Okay. Which I didn't bring out. I'll run in the grab. Here you go, Paul. Thank you, Ken. <laughs> I'm just set so, that right there for now. Oh, you're not gonna put it on now? Nope. So you ready to put it together? 
Oh, we're gonna get the beef in there. Get oh. this heating up. Oh, okay, I thought you were gonna put it in the uh, barbecue. Well, because we want it nice and hot first. Okay. We're just gonna mix it with everything in there. Oh boy. It, so that's cold. And then we're gonna stack it nice and high, and then put it in the barbecue to melt the cheese. Nice. Let's do that. We'll leave that there. Oh, so we took some out for the for the bambinos. I'm just gonna put a bit of salt and pepper. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. That smells yummy. Yummy! Yummy! But if, if somebody wanted to save time, they could actually go to the store and buy that pretty much cut of you meat. Can buy, yeah, you can buy, go in the deli section and get, roast, they, they'll put roast beef on the slicer for you. Right. Um, get it all ready so you don't have to actually cro yeah, cook a roast beef. I mean, beef. it's such a quick, buy a bread that you like, baguette or whatever you want, or a small sub bun or whatever. I think I'm going to um, do this for home. Yeah, it's a great little thing. And if you want, throw some mushrooms. Like, just do a variation on what you like in it. Nice. Very simple. We got this. Oh, it's getting nice and hot, too. I wonder if anybody's ever done a vegetarian Philly cheesesteak. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to put that right, I want to mark, I want to get the flavor of the barbecue. Oh. Right so I'm going to turn this down. You can see it already. you got to watch it. Yeah, yeah, you got to move. Like as the, as the butter melts, it's on it, it's going to flare up really fast. But as it burns, you're going to get a bit of that smoke flavor. Okay. So I want it to It's be, burning. Uh, yeah, see it? <laughs> see it? <laughs> Ooh. Oi. Oh, yeah. Smell that. That is delish. Oh, uh oh, we have right a way. Houston. We have a problem. Get that right in the front. So you're gonna see. That's gonna look how it's gonna oh. up. Look at that. Oh, I'm scared. I'm scared. Oh, you gotta move them fast. Jeez. This is what we're gonna be stacking them on, and then the top buns. I'm just gonna set aside for a second. Oh my gosh, I'm definitely gonna be cooking this one up for the family. I'll leave this down because I want to leave the heat trapping. In there. It's gonna nicely browning. You want it nice and hot. And there's no sauces or anything that they do, eh? Nope. I do when sometimes I, I like to put steak sauce. Oh, okay. I'll do it at work and I'll put steak sauce in it. So I'll put a bit of HP sauce and then Wow. So you get the flavor of that as well. But we're sort of trying to I mean In the States they don't have HP, I think they only have A1. That's possible. Yeah, A1's well, a yeah. big thing in the oh. States. So, but steak sauce. Yeah. So you, whatever one you like, you can you can saute that in. But we're gonna do it like we're gonna do this. This is this is getting nice and hot. So we're gonna try and we're gonna try and stack this up nicely. Be even, or there's gonna be a fight. There might be a fight. Mm, yummy. Boy. It depends on how messy you want to go and how much you want on it. It's just up to you, right? Mm -hmm. Oh man. Let me do this. Just going for the creative. Oh, I just want to get it stacked across nicely so it melts on top. And that's just supposed to hold all this stuff together or Messy, craziness, messy and gooey. And I'm gonna make a bit more room because I, I do want the tops just to soften in there a bit, like this. So I'm gonna turn this side off. Right, convection kind of thing. Especially this one too. I just want the heat in there to. Because I don't want to burn the buns from the bottom on the heat there. Right. So I want to sort of the heat to travel across and melt it nicely. So we're sitting about 400 degrees. We were up uh, in around 450 to 500, I think, when we first lifted the lid. Let's take a look what's happening in here now. Oh! Oh boy. Mm, yeah. Mm, 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 you don't feel to eat that very, right away. So I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna slide it nicely so uh, we don't disturb it on the plate there. Picture time. There we go. Nice. Oh boy, let's eat. All right, guys, we're ready to eat, and that looks awesome. What did you do the last second there? I just gave a little was... cut, and just so it'd be easier for us to eat. Just like that, people. Mm. Nice diagonal cut, presentation. And what did you say you would do? You'd put a stick in it? Well, usually at the, re like the restaurant, I usually do this, and then put a skewer and have it stacked. Oh, okay, for the presentation part. Yeah. And then usually french fries on the side, or? Yeah, fries, or salad, or? Potato chips, I would think, almost. I'm not sure why. My brain's thinking, I guess because it's a sandwich, I'm thinking potato chips. All right, guys, I haven't had a Philly cheesesteak in so long, mm. but check it out. You can scratch it, sniff it, and you can sniff it.
Wait, else. You can oh, I'm going to scratch it for real. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, that smells awesome. Mm. <laughs> a perfect bun for that sandwich. Mm. Mm. Nice crunch on the outside. Yeah, toasting it too is a definite yeah. bonus. Mm. So I'm actually picking up the the barbecue flavors flavor from the little grill one there. Dropping on the grill quickly. Paul, that is a fantastic sandwich. I am definitely going to make this at home. My daughter's a vegetarian, so I'm you thinking put extra beef in there. <laughs> extra beef. <laughs> Uh, I was thinking that she there's a certain um, hamburger patty that she likes, and if I slice it uh, yes. as, if, as if it was uh, beef, yep. and then throw and then basically have an extra pan off to the side mm -hmm. and cook it the same way, she could have a wicked Philly cheesesteak. Yep. Okay, guys, we're gonna try Paul's habanero uh, and mayo. Maybe that was mm. too much. <laughs> it's gonna be a stinger. Habanero. Philly cheesesteak down the hatch. Did you dip? Yeah. Ouchy. Ooh! Just a little ouch. Wow. Oh, I love the heat. It's a nice heat. Starting to build a bit too much, maybe. <laughs> We might have to call somebody. Yeah, but the mayonnaise toned it down. If we yeah. went straight with the habanero, it would have been. Ooh. All right, guys, Paul and I are gonna polish the rest of these off, so hang on. Mm. We are all done. Paul, dude, that was absolutely fantastic. Start with the greasy hands. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we, we both got the cheese grease on our hands. It's just like, mm. looks like I put uh, mm. suntan lotion all over me. Oil kind. <sighs> wow, that was absolutely fantastic. Putting this on midway through the sandwich was great. Continuing doing it throughout it would be a bad oh. idea. Like, Paul's yeah, actually still... sweating. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, goodness. Ooh. I forgot to turn my sound off. Anyway, Paul, fantastic sandwich. Uh, again, the only thing you could do to change that up is to put more or less on there if you want. Obviously, I'm absolutely stuffed. Like that was probably yeah. just the. I couldn't eat any more than that. Maybe a little, little bit of chips on the side, maybe, but not too many. Yeah. Cool. Cool. All right, guys, thank you very much for your suggestions. If you like this show, please hit the subscribe button. It's free. Did you know that? I didn't know that. I it's free. I something new every single day of a week. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Ding, 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 ding. And we'll see you next time on another Ken and Paul Cook and Review. Ken and Paul out. Boop.